Hey, we have another reprint of Jace the Mind Sculptor in Double Masters. So, I thought it was about time I reviewed whether or not he is worth playing in Oathbreaker. This is Chad, the last OB, welcoming you to Da Bomb Double Masters. In this episode, I am going to do a commander review for one of the recently reprinted Planeswalkers, Jace the Mind Sculptor, for the Oathbreaker format. If it's your first time here, I make Oathbreaker content, and if that's what you're into, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when I make a new video for you. Before we start, I just want to say that my evaluation is based on the common factors people use when choosing a particular Oathbreaker to run in their deck. These factors are lore slash story, financial value, and playability in the Oathbreaker format. I will be grading the card as we go, and at the end I will provide a letter grade for Jace the Mind Sculptor. First things first, let's cover a little bit of lore. Lore is important in ranking a Planeswalker because many, many people will choose to run an Oathbreaker based on how much they like, or in some cases, hate a Planeswalker. Before I get into it, here's a general spoiler warning as I go over some of Jace's history. Jace was first printed in the Lorwyn block. This was a time when Planeswalkers were first introduced to the game. And Jace has been a major player in Magic the Gathering lore ever since. Since this is not a lore video, I am just going to be hitting the cliff notes of Jace's background. Jace is a mage that specializes in mind manipulation magic. His cards often depict him crafting illusions, using clairvoyance, and most important, using his powers of telepathy. Jace is able to read other people's minds with almost no effort. His skill in telepathy is rife for abuse, so he is always depicted as a character that has to struggle with his own moral compass when choosing how to best use it. Jace has had problems with secrets since the very beginning of his origins. When he discovered that his mentor had been keeping the secret of his power from him, he shattered his mentor's very mind and has been on the run ever since. But on the other side of secrets, Jace's curiosity and need to learn and discover closely guarded secrets has caused him trouble and fortune in the past. It has been said that discovering the secret of planeswalking was part of what allowed him to see the bigger world and ignited his spark in the first place. Jace used his telepathy on Ravnica to blackmail the rich and live in comfort. If we fast forward a bit, Jace fought on Ravnica versus a group that most likely worked with and for Bolas. And during the events on Ravnica, Chandra, who was unrelated to that group, stole or procured a scroll and left for Zendikar. After following her to Zendikar, he and Chandra became instrumental in the breaking of the seal on the Eldrazi. Which seemed like a good time to go home to Jace, so upon returning to Ravnica to seek some peace, he got wrapped up in the intrigue concerning the maze at the center of Ravnica that niv Perun Perun was investigating. Upon solving the maze, at the core of the city, he became the living avatar of the Guild Pack, an ancient and powerful magical agreement amongst the progenitors of the Ravnican Guild system that helps to keep the peace of the city-wide plane. Since then, Jace has fought to destroy the Eldrazi Unzendikar, helping to form the Gatewatch to deal with extraplanar threats in the process. Fast forwarding again, he was defeated by Volos and his forces on a Menno Kit along with the rest of the Gatewatch, and lost his mind only to find himself stranded on the shores of Ixalan. Mindwipe, he became a member of a rival planeswalker from Ravnica's pirate crew, Varaska. 
only for him and Veraska to later fall in love while adventuring on the plane. After finally getting his mind back, he made it back to Ravnica in time to take part in the War of the Spark. And in doing so, he ultimately helped to quash Bolas's invasion and his plans to become a new god. So, for lore, Jace has been a heavily supported character in the story, to the point that I'm a little sick of him, quite frankly. But that's not true of everybody. But since this is my video, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. Next, let's look at the monetary value of this Jace the Mind Sculptor reprint. The reason I look at monetary value in these videos is because whether or not a Planeswalker is affordable is a great indicator of whether or not people can afford to play the Planeswalker. So once more, it is worth mentioning that in this set we are getting two different variations of this Jace as reprints, just as we did with Karn. But, in this case, we're getting the same World Waker art for both, just with extended borders on the Showcase version. I... I find this attempt a little lackluster in the grand scheme of things. Usually when we get two versions of a card in a set, I like to see the other version have alternate art that's going to push that price, but also is going to be something the people who want to bling out their deck truly want. This Jace has been printed seven times, so I find it surprising that his prices are still $59 and $89 respectively for these two printings. So for many people, this is going to still be a little too expensive for your first Oathbreaker deck, or in some cases any Oathbreaker decks. In fact, due to the current cost, he is less affordable as an Oathbreaker than Karn the Liberated, who was also reprinted in this set. Since this evaluation is based on the growth of the Oathbreaker format and potential decks that can be built and is not an MTG Finance article, I will be giving this card a 3 out of 5 as its cost doesn't make it easy for most people to play with. Now let's look at Jace the Mind Sculptor critically and see if he has a home in your Oathbreaker decks as we judge his playability. On edh.oathbreaker.com, there are currently only 33 decks that run this Jace as an Oathbreaker. But I think this case is due more to cost than playability. Jace is a mono blue commander, but since blue is one of the strongest colors in the game, this isn't the kind of setback it was for Karn the Liberated. There's also plenty of signature spell support for him to build the way you want, including many draw, counter, and tutor options for his deck. As far as places where theme meets card selection, there are a total of 24 unique cards, including other printings of Jace as a character, that bear his name for a full-flavored deck experience if you want to go that route. Finally, despite the fact that a lightning bolt will off him, he will help control our draws for the rest of the game, bounce problematic creatures, and provide an albeit hard to achieve onboard win condition. Due to the factors, I believe he is as good in the 58 as he is as an Oathbreaker. And when thinking of playability without factoring in cost, I think he deserves a 4 out of 5. So with a score of 4 out of 5 in lore, 3 out of 5 in monetary value, and 4 out of 5 in playability, Jace the Mind Sculptor has an average score of 73%, landing it with a solid C grading. Now that we have evaluated Jace the Mind Sculptor from the Double Masters reprints, what other cards do you think I should review? And what Double Masters cards are you most excited about? Please let me know in the comments. If you like any of the cards in this video, including our Mind Mage Extraordinaire, this channel is now supported by TCGplayer.com, which is one of the best places for you to find your cards at the best price. Alternatively, if all you need is custom gaming supplies, please check out our link for InkedGaming.com, who also supports the channel. If you are interested in the Oathbreaker format and how to play, please check out the playlist here. And if you want to see a YouTube video that has been curated for you, please check out the video below. Thanks again, 
and I can't make these videos without you, and I wouldn't, so please remember to subscribe, and I hope this video blew your mind.